cambiamos nuestra forma de hacer banca para adaptarnos a los nuevos tiempos, reinventarnos de... de... Okay, we're back, we're back. What a great show we've been having tonight. Had a lot of great callers calling tonight, asked a lot of great questions about grace. We've been uh, freeing a lot of people from a lot of mental bondage, a lot of mental bondage that people have been having. And so I'm going to go ahead and go to my next caller here. i got Kelly from Cincinnati. Kelly, what's on your mind tonight? Yes, hi, Lewis. Um, I just wanted to call and say I understand that you guys, you know, you really love grace and stuff. But Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Kelly, have you watched the show long? And um, another question, Kelly, do you read your Bible very much at all? Is that something that you've spent much time reading or what you're saying now? Is this something that you're just regurgitating? Something that you heard your pastor say before without any context? Something maybe someone on a YouTube video said without really clarifying what that meant. And so now you're going to walk around like one of those pull string dolls. Just the pull string is pulled. You're going to keep regurgitating the same thing over and over. If you love him, keep my commandments. Without clarifying what that means. And then not clarifying the gospel. Because if you think that means keeping the Ten Commandments, Kelly. Then not only are you not being clear with what that verse means, but you're not being clear with what the gospel means. So I'm going to bring you back online, Kelly, and I want to ask you, do you believe that's talking about the Ten Commandments? Oh, yes, absolutely. If you're keeping the Ten Commandments, that's a sign that you love him. If you're not keeping the Ten Commandments, that's a sign that you don't love him. See, even the demons can say they believe and love him, but are the demons keeping the Ten Commandments? No. So therefore, we should. And if you're not keeping the Ten Commandments of loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as you love yourself, then you've got to question whether or not you're even a true Christian, whether or not you're even saved. Kelly, I'm going to put you back on hold here because there's a lot of problems with what you're saying here. I don't think you understand the implications of what you're saying. I'm going to try to lay them out for you here. First of all, when you're talking about the Ten Commandments, you're talking about a universal guilt that we're all under. The Ten Commandments reveal that. Whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world would become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. So when it comes to the law, when it comes to the Ten Commandments, Kelly, nobody's keeping them. Otherwise, you wouldn't have this universal guilty verdict that every mouth is stopped and everybody is guilty. And the reason why that is, Kelly, is because the law has such a stringency to it that you have to keep it all perfectly, completely, without fail. The scripture says, all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, for cursed is everyone who doesn't continue to do all things in the book of the law to perform them. You have to do all things, Kelly. You have to do them all perfectly and completely. James chapter 2 says, whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at one point is guilty of all of it. So one single infraction can make you guilty of the entirety of the law. That's why it's a curse, Kelly, because you have to do all things perfectly and completely to actually say that you're keeping the Ten Commandments. See, when Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, he wasn't talking about the Ten Commandments. Kelly, if you consider when Jesus said this, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, I want you to listen closely, Kelly. I don't want you to miss this point. Like so many false teachers on radios and YouTube ministries and churches and street corners around the world get this wrong. I want you to listen closely, Kelly. Put your ear real close to that speaker. Put it all the way up next to that speaker so you hear every syllable of everything that I say here. And you don't miss one word or one sentence. When Jesus was speaking to his disciples, he said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, I want you to listen to real closely, Kelly. If you get this point, if you get this point that I'm about to say, you'll get a point that over a billion people a day miss as they go on preaching the false gospel. Jesus never said to keep the Father's commandments. He said to keep his commandments. 
If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, Kelly, if Jesus wanted us to keep the Father's commandments, he would have said, If you keep the Father's commandments, you will abide in our love, just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus makes a clear differential that the world just wants to completely ignore. That he said, if you keep my commandments, so he says he's got commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments. Then he differentiates to the father's commandments. He lets us know there's something different. Father has commandments. Jesus is keeping them. Remember the ones we can't keep, Kelly? The ones that show universal guilt? The one that one single infraction makes us guilty of the entirety of the law? The law that's a curse that if you don't do all things to perform the things in the law, you become guilty of the entirety of it. Remember those commandments, Kelly? Those commandments, those Ten Commandments, those are the ones Jesus kept. Only Jesus can make the boast that he's kept the Ten Commandments. Just as I have kept the Father's commandments, only Jesus can make the boast that he's kept the Father's commandments. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I can't tell you enough, Kelly, how Jesus did not say to keep the Father's commandments, or he would have said, if you keep the Father's commandments, you will abide in our love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So he makes a clear differential. So now the question is, Kelly, what are the commandments? What are his commandments? Because you've been going around telling people it's the Ten Commandments, which gives people the impression that they're justified by the law. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For only through the law comes the knowledge of sin, Kelly. Only through the law comes the knowledge that you're not keeping the Ten Commandments. You see, when it says, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, it's saying everybody is guilty of not keeping those Ten Commandments. The ones that you've been boasting and telling everyone else that you've been keeping them, and that everyone else is supposed to keep them. If you love me, keep my commandments. That means the Ten Commandments because of your simplistic reasoning. Well, I hope you don't make that mistake anymore, Kelly. Because when Jesus was talking about, if you love me, keep my commandments, those are defined and differentiated in the scripture. Now, I want you to consider this, Kelly. The same person that was standing there, the Apostle John, standing there next to Jesus, when he said, if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. He was with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He clarified with Jesus what that actually meant. And so to give us all clarification of what Jesus meant, he wrote in 1 John, he says, this is his commandment. Now listen closely, Kelly. Get real close to the speaker. I don't want you to miss this. Get real close. Pull your chair up. Pull it real close to the speaker. The Apostle John, who walked and talked and spent night and day with Jesus, says this. He says, this is his commandment, to believe on the name of the Son of God, and that you should love one another. So there we have it. Finally, Kelly, believe it or not, we finally can be able to differentiate and understand what Jesus' commandment actually is, to believe on the name of the Son of God, which is the gospel, Kelly, isn't it? To believe on the name of the Son of God. It's to believe in Jesus Christ as your perfect Savior. That's how you're saved, coincidentally, isn't it, Kelly? It's actually not through the Ten Commandments, but because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. So the scripture tells us it's through faith in Jesus Christ. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law, so we're justified, we have a non-guilty verdict, independent from law of performance, Kelly, by keeping that first John commandment. This is his commandment, to believe on the name of the Son of God. When we've done that, Kelly, we're justified, independent from the Ten Commandments. You remember the ones you were referencing, if we love him, keep his commandments, and you were saying that was the Ten Commandments? Well, it's actually the first John commandment, to believe on the name of the Son of God, and to love one another, Kelly which doesn't have to do with a universal collective love of every wicked person on the planet who denies Jesus Christ, but the love one another has to do with those who hold to the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what his blood has actually accomplished. That we as the family and children of God should love one another. 
That's why Jesus called it a new commandment, a new commandment that I give to you that you should love one another. It's different than the old commandment that you're referencing, Kelly. You know, the old commandment, the Ten Commandments, the Father's Commandments, to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now, that has a demand of a universal call that no one's able to meet. The law shows us that we're guilty. You've never actually loved your neighbor as you love yourself, Kelly. If you think because one Sunday you took a pie over to your neighbors, that somehow fulfilled the law in its totality because of one single action, that's completely wrong, Kelly. You have to love your neighbor in thought, word, and deed for the rest of your life without fail. See, when Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, only Jesus can make the boast that he has kept the Father's commandments, that he has loved his neighbor and thought, word, and deed, and everything he thought, everything he did, everything he said was out of pure love for people to be saved. He was a living sacrifice. He gave himself for the entire world so that those who would believe in him, Kelly, not keep the Ten Commandments, those who keep the Ten Commandments will be saved. No, that's wrong, Kelly. It's those who believe on the name of the Son of God. So after we believe and we're saved, Kelly, then we should love one another. Jesus said love one another. Again, that love one another has to do with those within the family of God. It doesn't have to do with the universal call to love every single person on the planet. It has to do with loving people that when they have given the gospel, they have clarified things. Loving people and recognizing them as family in accordance to the testimony of the blood of Jesus Christ in the gospel. So I'm going to go ahead and put you online, Kelly, because I want to hear what... I want to hear what you have to say. Do you understand what I'm saying here, Kelly? You know what? I'm really sorry I called in here. What a what a wicked people you are. You people, a bunch of hateful people. You got me on hold all this time. You went on a big old rant. I just think you're not walking in love. What a bunch of hateful, wicked people. I personally think all of this is just leading to people living ungodly lifestyles. No one wants to love anybody. No one wants to keep the Ten Commandments. I'm sorry, I'm done. You're a jerk. You're a complete scumbag. I'm not calling to this show ever again. And another thing, if I... That'll be quite enough, Kelly. I, I took her offline. She's done. I would like to apologize to my listeners. I had to hear that. You see, she's not walking in love when I try to clarify the gospel. She did not have that preferential love. When I started clarifying the gospel, what the blood of Jesus has accomplished, who we are by faith in him. Oh boy, how that human flesh and that pride welled up, had to say, no, I keep the Ten Commandments, give the impression that she's a good person in and of her own standing. We see Jesus say, no one is good but God alone, and he was referencing the Ten Commandments, that the Ten Commandments would reference if anyone was good. If you were good, then you would be keeping the commandments. Since no one's good, that's a sign no one's keeping the commandments. So when anyone says that if you love me, keep my commandments, and they mean that that means the Ten Commandments, Jesus said no one is good but God alone. In other words, nobody is keeping the commandments. Say it with me, listeners. Nobody is keeping the commandments. So we see in the scripture that once we have kept Jesus' commandment, this is his commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God, once we have done that, according to Scripture, the Bible says that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That when you believe in Jesus Christ, you get his righteousness and the law has come to its end in terms of the Ten Commandments. The thing that Kelly kept trying to push on everybody, that if you love him, keep his commandments, that means the Ten Commandments, according to Kelly. According to the Bible, if you love him, keep his commandments, that means to believe on the name of the Son of God. And once you have done that, the law has come to its end. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. We also see in Galatians, it says the law was a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. Once we've been justified by faith, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. Kelly, I know you're out there still listening. I, I know how people are when they get butt hurt, when they've been kicked off the radio program. They still want to hear what someone has to say about them. So I want you to pay attention to this, Kelly. In Galatians, where it says the law is a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ, but once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer under the schoolmaster. How does the schoolmaster lead us to faith in Christ, Kelly, so that we'd be justified and get that non-guilty verdict? The schoolmaster shows us that we're guilty, right, Kelly? 
it shows us that we're guilty of not keeping his commandments in terms of the father's commandments see if we were keeping the father's commandments then how could the schoolmaster ever do its work because the schoolmaster just shows us that we're guilty that we need a savior so we come to christ we get the justified not guilty verdict and then look what the scripture says there kelly it says now that we've been justified by faith been justified we are no longer under the schoolmaster wow that's something kelly under the schoolmaster you know the ten commandments the father's commandments that jesus referenced when he said if you keep my commandments to believe on the name of the son of god you'll abide in my love just as i've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love well once you believe in jesus christ and you abide in the love of god you're removed from the ten commandments that would just bring condemnation and guilt to you kelly you know the thing that you keep trying to put everybody else under see it says once you've been justified by faith you're no longer under the schoolmaster in terms of the ten commandments kelly the thing that you put everybody under every time you say if you love me keep my commandments and you think that means the ten commandments and that's what you tell everybody it means kelly get your pencil out i want you to write these scriptures down i got another one for you acts chapter 13 verse 39 through him, everyone who believes is freed from all things through which they could not be freed from through the law of Moses. See, the one who believes is freed from the law of Moses, not that they have to keep it, Gilly. See, if you have to keep it, you're not free from it. See, if I tell someone in order to love God, you have to keep the commandments. That's not freeing them from the law of Moses, Kelly. Through him, everyone who believes, say the believe, that's keeping the first John commandment, this is his commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God. Once you've kept that commandment, Kelly, you're freed from the law of Moses. Everyone who believes is freed from the law of Moses. So when you go around telling everyone that they need to keep the Ten Commandments by your misinterpretation of if you love me, keep my commandments, that's not freeing people from the Ten Commandments, Kelly. If to prove I love God, I have to keep the Ten Commandments, then I'm not free from the law of Moses. But the scripture says through him, everyone who believes is freed from the law of Moses. See, there's more than one scripture in the Bible, Kelly. If you actually look around and kind of scan about, you'll find a lot more scriptures that might contradict your current understanding of the scripture you're looking at. So here's another scripture for you, Kelly. If you got a pen or you got your tablet out, maybe you can text it in somewhere so you remember it for later here's another one romans chapter 7 says brothers and sisters you have died to the law through the body of the lord jesus christ that you might be joined to another that is him has been raised from the dead have you ever had anyone die kelly in your life have you ever had anyone die to you did you lose that relationship that relationship was over in this life it completely ended well that's what it says about the law you have died to the law through the body of the lord jesus christ they were dead to the law, Kelly, when it comes to the Ten Commandments. We were never keeping them in the first place. It just showed universal guilt. Whatever the law says, it says to those under the law that the whole world will become guilty before God and every mouth will be stopped. So we were never keeping the law in the first place, Kelly. That's why now we have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever had a pet die, Kelly? Ever had a pet and they died? Do you ever talk with it anymore is it any kind of relationship still happening with that dead pet no that's the way it is with the law kelly once you're dead to it you're dead to it having said that i think it's time to bury this call and put it to death here i'm gonna go ahead and take another caller here and i'm gonna see it's, uh there's no name coming up here it looks like it's a cell phone usually we get landlines calling in go ahead and uh, take the call Hello, caller uh, number two. How are you doing today? Yeah, this is Kelly. I'm calling back on my cell phone. Sir, you're an argumentative, disingenuous, low-life scumbag.